Today we're going to be going over the Potential Energy Diagrams Lab. Now what you're going to do to do this lab is you're going to go to Table I and you're going to choose five exothermic and five endothermic reactions and then you're going to graph them. Yes, that is 10 total reactions from Table I. So just to go over with Table I, these are your Table I reactions. So you're going to take five that have delta H that's negative. Those would be exothermic. It says it right here on the bottom. And then five that are positive. Those are the endothermics. It doesn't matter which five you take. It's not going to matter. Uh, and you're going to do five of each. This lab is basically just designed to help you learn the curve and learn where everything goes. So be sure to, um, you're going to label everything on the graph, no abbreviating. This is everything that you're going to have to label. I'll show you how to do one. Um, you're going to label your X and Y. You do not need to scale them, so no numbers needed. That will save you a ton of time. Uh, the reaction itself should be your title. I'll show you how to do that. Same goes for the X. Um, the only thing we have to worry about is that we have enough space so that we can make the PE diagram fit on the scale properly. I'll explain to you how to do that in a second. And then the last thing is we're going to color code the values uh, like this. So the potential energies are going to be blue, the activation energies of the forward reaction are going to be green, the reverse will be purple, and the um, heater reaction will be red. You could use any color colors you want, whatever you have available. Um, they don't have to be these, this, um, these exact color pattern, they just do have to match. So in other words, I want all the potentials to be one color, all the forwards to be a different color, all the reverses to be a different, and the delta H to be a fourth different color. So let's get to the lab. So you're going to take a piece of graph paper and you are going to pick a reaction and you're going to give it a title. So I said that the reaction is going to be your title. So let's start with the first one. So here's my first reaction with the delta H off to the side. So I'm going to make it the title of my graph. And then technically I could do it like this. Or I could put the delta H off to the side and not include it in the reaction. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, remember the reason I added it to the right was because it was a negative and therefore it's exo, so it's going to be on the right. If it were an endo reaction, I'd have to add it to the left side of the arrow. Um, so just be aware of that. So that's my title. For my X, I'm going to put... Time. I'm not going to label it because the time, the numbers themselves are, irre are irrelevant. It's just the fact that the x-axis represents time and the y-axis is going to be Now these can be labeled. Uh, you can have these um, done numerically. If you take a Regents, you will um, also notice uh, that uh, they will be numbered, but the numbers again they're really just so you can find quantities, uh, like I did in the notes uh, in the last video, but they're not actually really that important. So now we're going to draw the curve. So since I know this is exo, I know that my curve is going to start somewhere up here. It's going to go up and then end down here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line. You're going to use a ruler. I don't have one with me, so I'm just going to do try to be as neat as I can. I'm going to pick some section up here, roughly at least halfway up the, the y-axis, and I'm going to put my line. And that's going to represent my reactants. And then I know it has to end down here, so I'm going to find another spot, and I'm going to put a line. And that's going to represent my products. And then I'm going to draw my catalyzed activation path. It's going to go up, and then come back down. That's that simple. I just needed to start put this line low enough so that I could make this hill large enough to fit everything. Same thing goes with this one. I'm going to now do my catalyzed reaction pathway and it's going to be dotted and it's going to be about the same and it ends up right there the same spot so I just need enough room so now I'm going to label everything so uh, in order to make labeling easier you can do this with a ruler you could do this um, by hand I'm just going to put a dotted line out like this and what this does is it allows me to represent the top of the catalyzed hill and I'm going to do the same here and this is going to represent the top of the uncatalyzed hill I'll do one over here this is going to represent the value of the reactants 
and then this one. It's gonna represent the value of the products. And now I have to label everything. So it's real simple. There's one. There's the other. So we'll label these. Activation energy. Forward reaction. And catalyzed. Activation energy of the forward reaction. Catalyzed. Those are the two. Uh, we can do this next one, mainly just because I don't want to smudge the ink as little as possible. Normally I would do all the activation energies first. This is going to be the P, or the reactants. We then have the potential energy of the two activated complexes, right? So for this one, I can put the line right up to here. Although remember, I could slide this left to right as long as it hits the top of this hill. Same thing here, it just happened to be happens to be conveniently spaced. And now we have the There's one of each. Uh, the next thing there's that quantity. So these two on the left, this is going to be the A E of the reverse reaction uncatalyzed. Same thing, catalyzed, and then this one. There's my products. Uh, the, a couple more things and we are done. So we have the, I'll try to turn this a little. This is gonna represent the uncatalyzed reaction path catalyzed reaction path. We have our our activated complexes. And then the last thing would be the delta H, which is going to be, well, I think I made a mistake. I did. So if you notice right here, the activation energy of the forward reaction, it's the energy needed to get over the hill. It should actually be up to there. Not there. The quantity that I had originally put there, hopefully you caught that mistake, was the heat of reaction. Now I could put it somewhere in the middle, but my middle's a little cl uh, cluttered, so I'm just gonna put it off to the side here just because I have space for it. So this is my delta H, which is the heat of reaction, which would actually equal negative 890.4 kilojoules. That's, this here is what this value would be. So basically, numerically speaking, whatever number the reactants were at, the products would have to be 890.4 kilojoules lower than that, which is why scaling the Y becomes very complicated because we would have to make sure that this scale has enough room in it to give us this proper spacing here, the proper spacing down here, and still have room for an 890 kilojoule drop so that the graph could fit on the scale. So that's why I'm not having you scale them because it's literally just a, a numerical exercise and it doesn't really do much in terms of uh, the chemistry of this. Now the last thing you're going to do, these do have to be color coded. So um, what I mean by that is your potential energies would be green. So essentially you would take this line and it would be green, green, 
or I'm sorry, blue. Uh, so they're blue, uh, the color doesn't matter. And then the forward activation energies would be green. So then these would be green, they already are, but I'll go over them again. The uh, reverse activation energies would be purple. So let's see if I have a purple marker here. And then the Delta H would be there. So that should be everything on this graph. The last thing we would do is we would just take the right half of the reaction and write it here. So these would be the products, that line's what will represent them, and then over here, and that's what will represent it. So that would be your entire graph um, for this, and that would be one of your 10. You would then do five of these, they're all gonna look the same, the labeling's gonna be the same, it's just practice, and then you would do five endothermic, and the only difference here is everything connected to this line would stay where it is, it would just be pushed up to somewhere around here, and then everything on this line would just get pulled down. So now in an endothermic, it would look like that, except, so these things would all be in the same spots, just their sizes would be different. And then the curve would be obviously going up, not down. And then the last part, well, two more parts, there's a checklist. So just so you know, there's um, 10 of these, so you're going to do 10 graphs. That's the way I've done this way. So this would be graph one. You can literally just check off that you labeled everything. I color coded the ones that get colored. Um, the reaction pathways don't get colored, so I didn't highlight them. So you would just check off that you made all these. And so that would be for graph one, and you would do that 10 times. And then the last part for these graphs is going to be on the back of this page, there's some questions, you can do that. And then at the very, very bottom, there's this part, 1A and 1B. So if I look at my reaction, right, here's what I did. I said, 1A is, this is my title. So I'm just gonna write it here. So there's my title. I'm gonna then rewrite this with the delta H added to the proper side. So it would just be And that's it. So you're gonna do, this would be graph one, so you do this for graph one. Then there's graph two, and then it goes on two through 10. And then that's the entire lab.